Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In the first part of this playlist thus far, we've really been talking about muscles that control the wrist and the hand. And those muscles have been located in the forearm somewhere. So here's a picture right here. This is actually the posterior compartment of the forearm, the superficial posterior compartment. And so we talked about these muscles. We also talked about the anterior compartment and, of course, superficial and deep layers within those. These muscles that we've been talking about up to this point are considered extrinsic muscles of the hand. What that means is that they do produce movements of the hand, and in some cases the fingers, via their action at the wrist joint and then some other joints within the hand, but the muscles themselves do not lie in the hand. They're extrinsic to the hand. For example, look at all these muscle bellies. These muscle bellies are all in the forearm. So these muscles that we've been talking about are all extrinsic muscles. We're going to shift gears in this video and we're going to start talking about the intrinsic muscles. These are going to be muscles in the hand itself. And in contrast to the extrinsic muscles, which are more important in terms of creating tight grip and overall wrist positioning, the intrinsic hand muscles are going to be more important for fine grip and manipulations of the fingers. Okay, uh, So for example, when you get a key out of your pocket, and you have to hold the key in a certain way with your two fingers, your index finger and your thumb, in order to put it in the keyhole, in order to unlock your door, that's going to be more intrinsic muscles. Gripping a pencil and, and writing on a piece of paper or using the keyboard, a lot more of intrinsic muscles. So things that you might associate with fine motor control rather than lots of power and strength. Okay? That's what we're really going to be looking at here. And we're going to begin by talking about the thener muscles of the hand. Now, thener muscles we can really define in two ways. Um, one, all three of these muscles that we're about to talk about produce movements of the thumb. And also, they're innervated by the recurrent branch of the median nerve. We talked about the nerves in a previous video, so if you need more information on that, go back and, and reference that. But the theater muscles are all innervated by the median nerve's recurrent branch, and they all produce movements of the thumb. And so we're going to begin by looking at abductor pollicis brevis. Now, one thing before we get going, remember that pollicis refers to the thumb because pollux is another term for the thumb. Just like hallux was a term for the big toe or great toe, pollux refers to the thumb. So pollicis is going to be a muscle that moves the thumb. Abductor pollicis brevis is a really short muscle that's totally in the hand that abducts the thumb. That's this blue muscle right here. So it's going to originate on the scaphoid and trapezium bones. Those are carpal bones in the hand. You can see the fibers project la uh, distally out toward the thumb itself, and they're going to insert on the lateral side of the base of the proximal phalanx. Okay? Now remember the thumb has two phalanges. It has a distal ph uh, phalanx out here, and this would be where the proximal phalanx is. So because uh, this muscle does not reach the distal phalanx, it doesn't produce any movements of the interphalangeal joint. Okay? It only is able to move the proximal phalanx, and therefore the abduction that it's going to produce is at the carpometacarpal joint. And because abductor pollicis brevis does not reach all the way out to the distal phalanx, it's not going to be producing movements at the interphalangeal joint here in the thumb. In fact, it's actually going to have most of its movement at the carpometacarpal joint. That is the joint between the scaphoid and trapezium and then the metacarpal associated with the thumb. Even though it inserts on the proximal phalanx, it's really not going to have a lot of movement associated with the metacarpophalangeal joint. It's really going to be at the carpometacarpal joint, and as you can see here, it's going to abduct the thumb. And as we mentioned before, all three thener muscles are going to be innervated by the median nerve's recurrent branch. That was abductor pollicis brevis. Now let's look at the muscle just medial to it, flexor pollicis brevis. This muscle is going to flex the thumb, and it's going to do so pretty much also at the carpometacarpal joint. Right? Uh, it's going to originate here at the flexor retinaculum, 
Recall that the flexor retinaculum is really just a bundle of connective tissue that wraps around the ventral side of the wrist and basically covers all the tendons here that you can see that are coming from the flexor muscles of the forearm. Those were our extrinsic muscles. And so flexor pollicis brevis actually originates partly from the flexor retinaculum, but also from the trapezium, which is one of the origins of abductor pollicis brevis. This muscle is going to insert on the lateral side of the base of the proximal phalanx, just medial to the insertion of abductor pollicis brevis. And due to the fact that this insertion is a little bit medial, it's not going to produce abduction of the thumb. Rather, it's going to produce flexion of the thumb also at the carpometacarpal joint. And again, the innervation of this muscle is the same. It's the recurrent branch of the median nerve. We can take another look at this here on a different hand. This is actually the reverse. This was actually the patient's uh, left hand. This is the ventral surface or the palmar surface of the left hand. Now we're looking at the palmar surface of the right hand. So everything's flipped. Here's our thumb over here. And so our thenar muscles would actually be located on this side. Again, they're still going to be lateral. So first of all, the largest one, abductor pollicis brevis, has been peeled off. The reason it's peeled off here is because that's going to allow us to see the deepest thenar muscle, which we'll cover in a minute, called opponent's pollicis. But this is going to be abductor pollicis brevis right here. Again, medial to that right here is flexor pollicis brevis. Let me get rid of this arrow. That's not anything. This is flexor pollicis brevis. Here we have adductor pollicis. We'll actually be covering that in two videos. And then here's the first lumbrical muscle. Again, we'll cover that in the same video as adductor pollicis. Right here is the flexor retinaculum, and you can actually see here that the flexor pollicis brevis does have part of its origin on that. We're also going to see here, as you can probably guess, that opponent's pollicis also has part of its origin on the flexor retinaculum. And then this tendon right here is the tendon of flexor carpi radialis. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. Let's go look at the third thenar muscle of the hand. This is back to the original picture. This is actually the palmar surface of the left hand. So here's our thumb right here. And this is the deeper muscle, opponent's pollicis. You might be able to see a little bit of it while abductor pollicis brevis is still here, but generally you need to peel most of abductor pollicis brevis off in order to see most of opponent's pollicis, this green muscle. This muscle is going to have part of its origin on the flexor retinaculum, as we saw in the previous slide, and then also partly on the trapezium, one of those carpal bones. It's going to insert on the lateral side of the first metacarpal. So this one, opponent's pollicis, does not actually insert on the proximal phalanx. It's going to insert on the lateral side of the thumb's metacarpal bone. And its action is going to be to oppose the thumb. So when you hear that primates in particular have opposable thumbs, that means they're able to perform opposition, or they're able to oppose the thumb, and that's the action of this muscle, opponent's pollicis. And once again, this muscle is innervated by the median nerve's recurrent branch. We can go back to the previous slide right here, and we can actually see opponent's pollicis right here. We can see part of its origin here on the flexor retinaculum, and we're able to see most of this muscle because abductor pollicis brevis has been cut and then moved off of it to show the deep opponent's pollicis muscle. All right, so hopefully this makes sense to you. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In the next video, we're going to continue our study of the intrinsic muscles of the hand, but we're actually going to be looking at the hypothenar muscles. Thank you.